In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called word search. So given a m times n grid, right, and a word, find if the word exists in the grid. So when we do word search, we can do horizontally, right? We, we have to uh, construct the letters sequentially adjacent cells. And we can do this horizontally or vertically uh, neighboring, right? So in this case, the same letter cell might not be used more than once. So we can use the same letter, but we cannot use the same cell. Right, and then here you can see we have the grid, and then we have A, B, C, C, E, D. We can go first find the letter, right? In this case, A, and then we're going to search all four directions to see if the next letter consists. In this case, we can we found B, right, which is on the right. Then we know that there there's we got to continue to search, and we search all four directions for C. Now C is right there. Search all four directions to C, and C is right there. Search all four directions for E. Now E is right there. And then search all four direction for D. Now D is right here, right? So we know that, oh, well, there's there is a path. And then at the end, we're just going to return true, right? So if there's no path, we're just going to, after we search all four directions, if none of those path is equal to fall, uh, is equal to true, then we're just going to return false, right? So, but that's one case. And the other case is that we have to thinking about how to like memoize the result, right? Like how can we store the visited node and how can we keep track of the unvisited node? What we're gonna do is we're gonna use a Boolean 2D array and store the unvisited cell on, uh, as false and visited cell as true. So let's say we have an example like this, A, B, C, E, right? And the, re the result is false. And the reason why we have result is false here, as you can see, is because we don't have A, B, C, B. And you might be thinking, well, there's A, B, C, and B right there, but we cannot use the same cell. Um, we cannot use same cell, right? So if we cannot use the same cell, that means that we have to have a way to like memoize. We have to have, have a way to keep track of which cell has visited, which cell has not visited. So let's say we found this character, the first character, which is equal to the first character in the word. Then we do a depth search for all four directions. Then we find if this is visited. If this is not visited, then we're going to continue to see if this character is equal to the second character that, that is equal to the word. Now, if it is equal to the word, okay, cool. Then we're going to search on the all four directions, and we know that this is visited, so we don't, we don't, we're not going to bother. We know that this is not visited, but this is out of bound. We know that this is not visited, but this character right here, you can see, is um, is basically not the third character. And we know that this is the third character. Okay, then what we're going to figure out is we're also going to search all four directions, but we know that this is visited. Even though this is B, but this is visited, so we're going to return false for this path. This is out of bound, this is not a character, and this is not the character either. So in this case, this path will visit it, but we're going to return false, and we're going to use backtracking to go back and say this is false, right? And then we're going to continue to search the nest A, in this case A is right here, search all four directions. If there is no character that, uh, if there's no path, then we're just going to return false, right? So that's one case, right? That's one case for using the memoize, um, the caching the result, right? Caching the visited and unvisited notes, uh, visited and unvisited cell. But what if we have something like this, right? So first of all, we know that this is true because we have A, B, C, E, S, E, 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 F, S, right? In this case, what we can do is we can, same thing, apply the same principle. We can find the current character, right? But up to here, up to this character, right? We do an depth first search. And then up to this C, we know that there's two E. You, you realize that there are two E. One E, if we go down this path, this E right here, we potentially end up in a wrong path, which we will traverse S right there, and then traverse E, and then realize that this is a dead, dead end, right? This is a dead path, right? There's no more uh, elements, then it will return false. But at the same time, it will mark those places as visited. So what we need to do is that if we realize that this place right here, and these, like this path, this direction is false, then what we have to do is we have to mark those positions to false. Or in other words, 
make them unvisited. Like if this path that we go down to is uh, is a wrong path, is a is false, then when we going when we backtracking, when we coming back, we also have to make that position unvisited, so that when we go to a different direction, let's say if we were to go to a different direction on the right, we know that this is unvisited so that we can explore all of their options and then figure out from there. So now we know all those cases, uh, special cases. Let's try to do this in code. So our first step will be to creating this global variable called um, matrix. We're going to get matrix is equal to board. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a, we're going to basically use a nested for loop to iterate each and every single element. And the goal right now is to first find the character, find the first character that is equal to the word dot character as zero. So we're going to have letters, letters is equal to word dot to character array. Integer row length is equal to board dot length. Column length is equal to board at zero dot length. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're just gonna use a for loop to iterate. So once that's done, what we're going to do is we're going to perform our defer search. If we found that the current character, which is if matrix, right, if matrix at i at j is equal to letters at, right, letters uh, at zero, the first character, right, let's put it here, if, if that's the case, then what we're going to do is we're going to perform our defer search. So we're going to have a boolean result is equal to defer search. We're going to pass in the current result, right? Sorry, the current coordinate i and j, as well as which character should we start. In this case, we're going to have a DFS method that takes the current coordinate i and j, right? The current row and the current column. Then we're going to also take the uh, the the current the first uh, the first character, right? The index of the word the letters array. In this case, we're starting at the zeros index. And uh, what we're going to do is that if uh, if the result is true, right, we found a path using DFS, then we're going to return true. Otherwise, we're going to continue to find the next character that is equal to the letters at zero. And then if we find it, we're going to return true. If we don't find it, after we traverse the entire grid, which is going to return false. Now let's create this DFS method. Current row and the current column and then the current index. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to first define our base cases, right? Our base cases. And then once we define our base cases, what we're going to then do is we're going to um, see if um, current letter is equal to um, the word letter, right? If it's not, then we're going to return uh, false. But this is kind of like included in our base case. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a defer search for all four directions. The directions. Okay. Once we do a defer search for all directions, and if one direction is true, then this is a valid path. 
if no direction is true, right? If we found that, okay, well, there's no direction is true, then what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, return false. Okay, so in this case, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to basically return the result, right? So return the result at the end. But first, we're going to have a Boolean array visited that stores the visit, visited result. And for each iteration, we're going to have a brand new visited, okay? So that we're refreshing the result. Like we have a brand new grid to work with, okay? And we're going to have a size of row length, and we have a size of column length. Okay, now what we're going to do is for the base case, right? In this case, if current row less than zero, where current row is bigger than or equal to array.length, not array.length, a matrix.length, then we can return false. And if we have a situation where the current column is less than zero or if the current column is bigger than or equal to matrix at zero dot life okay and then what we had to do before that is we have to make sure that the current index is actually was in the range because we if if we if we have a situation where the the current word like we already successfully traversed all the words and we found a path we found the word right and then in this case for the next word if if we the current index is out of bound then we're just going to return true so then what we're going to do is we're going to focus on validating so in this case, if visited current row at current column, if the current position is visited already, then we're going to return false because we already visit that place. We don't want to visit that again, right? Then what we're going to do is we're going to um, have the um, check to see if the current character is equal to the uh, current row at current column is equal to array at current index. Right? If it does not equal to current index, then we can just return false. Otherwise, we're going to continue to do our job. Now we know. Now we know that this is equal to then what we had to do is that we have to mark that as visited so visit it at current row at current column is now equal to true because we visit that place already now we're going to do our defer search in this case we're going to have boolean top is equal to defer search current row uh, minus one and the current column index plus one we're moving on to the next index left is going to be current column minus one Right is going to be plus one, and then basically what's going to happen is we're just after it's done, after we're done, like getting this um, element right. In this case, what we're going to do is that if the current, so we have a boolean answer is equal to top or down. So if one of them is true, then that's going to be our answer, right? If none of them is true, then basically our answer is going to be false. So in this case, if we found that there is a path, if answer is equal to false, if there is no path, then we're going to 
um, set the current element, so visited, we're going to mark the current element unvisited, right? And in this case, if we visit, if we have a situation where we have the answer is equal to true, we found the path, then what we can do is we can just return true. Right, in this case, sorry, not, not true, sorry. Then what we're gonna do at the end, we're just gonna return answer, right? So now let's try to uh, run the code. In this case, we should have a integer j. Cannot find this. So 22, we have array. So instead of array, we should have letters. My bad. So it's going to be letters, right? In this case, we have array somewhere. But anyways, so let's try to run the code. Another array. 26, which is right here. So it should be letters at current index. And let's try with this result right here, this example right here. Okay, so let's try to submit. Okay, so here you can see we have our success. So basically, this is how we solve this problem uh, using deferred search backtracking.